with trials and tribulations. They start to strike one after the other, one after the other to where you feel like you can't catch up. Ya Allah, why is it all falling apart? What's happening? Why do the punches keep on coming? It's the circumstances around, it hits you at the wrong time. And it's like, Ya Allah, this, this is horrible. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to move forward. And of course, certain trials also have a permanence in regards to the consequences in life. You lose someone you love, as much as you cope, that person will not come back to this earth. Something falls apart, sometimes there's a permanence to that. Now, what do we do? So it's an interesting place that you find yourself in. And you have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give you a swamp, Allah gives you a springboard. When you're in that low point, you have a chance to jump up. There is no fall that any of us will ever encounter than the literal fall of Adam alayhi salam from paradise to earth. But even then, there was an elevation in his station, his maqam, his status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that made his station even greater than before he fell. The same thing with Yunus alayhi salam plunging to the bottom of the ocean. That's a fall that none of us could probably quite come to terms with. But you're in this place where you can rethink. Very beautiful dua from Salam ibn Abi Muti' rahimahullah ta'ala. He used to say, Oh Allah, if there is a station that you have gotten people to through hardships and trials, then allow me to reach that station without the trial. That was his dua. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu is narrated to have mentioned that most of the people that enter paradise don't enter paradise by a good deed that they do, but by the way they responded to a hardship. A hardship came your way and there was a sabr, an ihtisab, a patience, a, a resilience, a steadfastness that you showed. And that was the means by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered you to a place that you otherwise would not have been able to get. The thing is, is that you don't see that place right now. And so sometimes it becomes hard to be able to see outside of where you are at the moment, to be able to see light at the end of the tunnel, to be able to see that position in a paradise that you can't even imagine. It's hard to imagine it, it's hard to grasp it, it's hard to act in accordance with it, but that's what makes it so rewardable. SubhanAllah, you get this one life, this one life to live in this dunya that is consequential to the rest of your eternity and there are things that happen to you, one-time events that happen to you in this life. And there is one moment in that one-time event that if you capitalize on, it changes your entire hereafter. You know, when the Prophet said, the sabr, patience is at the first strike, that if you seize that moment and you respond in that once-in-a-lifetime moment, once-in-a-lifetime hardship, with a once-in-a-lifetime patience, what does it unlock for you in the hereafter? Bayt al-Hamd a house of praise that you walk into Jannah and you say, Yeah Allah, for me? Yeah Allah, how did I get to this place? Because you got hit and you responded right. And SubhanAllah, a lot of us are so paralyzed in that one moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. Yeah Allah, how do I get out of this? But you have to think about the potential, just as you are feeling the pain of the uniqueness of the hardship, you have to think about the uniqueness of the reward in that moment. Like there is something right now that if I do, Ya Allah, I can achieve so much. And dear brothers and sisters, there are various low points that we find in the Quran. But one thing that's almost always consistent is we learn about their hardships. Almost every prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about in the Quran, there is that moment. Rabbi inni maghloob, fantasir. Oh Allah, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I am in need. I am faqir. I am poor, in need, vulnerable. Bima anzalta ilayya, for what you would descend upon me, your blessings. I'm in need of your blessings. Ya Allah, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Ya Allah, I don't, where do I go from here? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al Oh Allah, I'm struck. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Almost all of them, why? Because pain is the universal human experience that we can all relate to. But that unique reward, that unique place. Your mom, my mom. Umm al Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. When she tells her own story of how she was slandered, and our mother felt a lot of pain. And I'm listening to my mom talk about the most painful moment in her life, where everything was darkness, where even the Prophet ﷺ, who was always a source of comfort to her, even the Prophet ﷺ was withheld from comforting her in those moments. All alone, did absolutely nothing wrong, and her honor is being dragged through the streets of Al Madina. Our mom. And our mother's talking to us. She's talking about the moments. 
She's talking about what was going through her mind. She's talking about what ayat of Qur'an she could remember and the ones that she couldn't. She's talking about how she felt when people looked at her. I was just paying attention to this one sentence that she says. She said, Wallahi, I never thought that Allah would reveal Qur'an for me. Who am I? So that Allah would reveal revelation from the heavens for me. That's your mom talking. I didn't think I was worthy of that. I never would have imagined that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal Qur'an for me. Who am I? Ten verses of the Qur'an come down to defend me. Who am I that the Qur'an would speak about me? I never thought that revelation would descend from the heavens for me. Your brothers and sisters, we don't know what comes from the heavens for us when we're in those low points. But we know that the Lord that descended those verses from the heavens for Aisha radiallahu anha and the Lord that rescued Ayyub alayhi salam and Yunus alayhi salam and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and answered those prayers is the same Lord that we're calling upon. Wallahu la yudli'u ajr al-muhsineen, la yudli'u ajr al-sabireen. Allah does not let the reward of the good doers go to waste, nor does He let the reward of the patients go to waste. And so when you're in that moment, dear brothers and sisters, and you're thinking now I have a window where I can really capitalize on the reward. Remember that there are things that would come down from the heavens for you that you will only see when you make it to paradise. And do not belittle yourself to where you think that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not encompass you. If our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that, I never thought Allah would reveal Quran for me. Who knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do for us.